Good afternoon and welcome to the Australian National Data Services uh, webinar about data linkage and the Australian Health Thesaurus. I'm Kate LeMay and I work at the Australian National Data Service and I uh, specifically work a lot with health and medical data. Um, we work to make Australia's research data assets more valuable for researchers, research institutions and the nation. Today is our second in our current a um, lot of health and medical webinars. We had three health and medical webinars earlier this year and then we've had two more uh, this month. Last week's was on patient views on data sharing and today's is on data linkage and the Australian Health Thesaurus. Every single time I have done any event uh, with Anne since I started nearly two years ago, uh, when we get feedback, data linkage is always something that people ask to know more about. So we're very lucky today to have Dr. Tricia Johnston from Queensland Health to talk to us about data linkage and she's been the Director of the Statistical Analysis and Linkage Unit, Statistical Services Branch in Queensland Health since 2009. She's worth worked with health data both at the Queensland Ambulance Service and within Queensland Health since 2000 and has extensive knowledge and experience in statistical analysis, linkage and interpretation and reporting of health data to support the development of policy and systems to improve the quality and efficiency of health services. We also have James Humphrey here from the Australian Health Thesaurus um, and he's the Information Manager at Health Direct Australia. James is responsible for managing content on the Health Direct Australian websites. This includes the content production team, the information partnership team and for the purposes of this presentation the information management team which manages the terminologies and ontologies used by Health Direct. So I'd like to pass over now to Trisha to speak to us about data linkage. Hi, thank you very much for having me today. Um, so I'll be talking from the Queensland perspective and trying to fill in a little bit from the national perspective where I can. Um, so apologies to people in other jurisdictions, this is mainly about Queensland. Okay, so my topic today is accessing and using linked health data. So I'm from the Statistical Services Branch within the Queensland Department of Health. So just a little bit first about that branch. So we have a broad sort of role in data collection and analysis and processing within the Queensland Health Department. So we both collect, process, analyse and disseminate statistics about health of Queenslanders and use of health services. We also have a role in developing statistical standards and maintaining a data dictionary about a lot of the data items that are collected in Queensland data collection. We also play a central role in data linkage, so the data linkage unit is located within the statistical services branch and also provision of data for health services, policy planning, management, monitoring and evaluation and of course research. So the, um, there is a data custodian role within the statistical services branch relating to some of the data collections within Queensland Health, so those relating to hospitalisations, perinatal and also by um, proxy for death registration information as well. So today I'll just be talking about what data linkage is, how linked data are used and how to apply for access to linked data. So I guess the thing that a lot of people talk about when they talk about linked data is that data are collected and they sit in silos. So for example, within any given hospitalisation or hospital event, we might have ambulance data, emergency department, admitted patient data and if for some people death registration data. So currently, particularly where you're looking across hospitals, there's no unique identifier to join that information together. And then within any given hospitalisation, you'll have some more data collections that sit in isolated silos. Um, so you might have pathology, pharmaceuticals, intensive care unit, operating room, mental health, perinatal data to name a few. Um, outside of that hospital event, there are other data collections that are isolated as well, so things relating to notifiable conditions, vaccinations, outpatient services, um, registry information, so there are sort of things like cancer registries, stroke registries and a number of others, trauma. And then there's primary care information, so that sits outside of the state jurisdiction, so relating to GP visits, MBS and PBS. And then there are other things like aged care data. Then you can take it further and we can look at things like, you know, education, police and justice, child protection, surveys about 
issues that relate to health, census data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a lot of information out there. If joined together, could be quite useful, but it's just sitting in a lot of silos. So the reason that we do linkage is that across all of these data collections, or most of the data collections, there's not a unique identifier that can say that that information relates to a single person across collections. So we use data linkage. It's a process that uses person level identifying information, things like name, date of birth and address, to determine which records within a data source or between data sources relate to a particular individual. Okay, um, when we talk about linkage, we're usually referring to probabilistic matching. So we're using probability to work out which um, records within different data collections relate to an individual. So the strength of that is that not all of the information needs to be available and the quality of all of those identifiers doesn't need to be perfect to allow us to make a match between the data collections. So why do we link? Um, basically because if we combine all of this information it provides much richer information than the individual collections by themselves. So within health we, do, we can use that information to look at patients across facilities. We can look at follow, following up cohorts. We can look to ensure that people haven't died um, when particular organisations like health or researchers are wanting to make contact with an individual so that they're not contacting an individual's family and um, causing more pain. Um, we can also link data to reduce the need to collect additional data which can be quite expensive. So within Australia, um, in the health context, data linkage was identified as an important research um, tool by the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy back in 2005 and they allocated funds to progress the development of linkage infrastructure within Australia. So the Population Health Research Network or PHRN was formed and nodes um, were created representing each jurisdiction in Australia to set up linkage infrastructure. So within Queensland, in the Queensland Department of Health, we have Data Linkage Queensland um, there's Cheryl within New South Wales and they also link ACT data. They were set up before the funding for PHRN was in place but they're also part of that network. Um, again, Western Australia has been operating a linkage unit for a long time prior to that but they're also part of that PHRN network. Um, there is um, SANT data linkage to conduct linkage for South Australia and Northern Territory. In Victoria, there's the Centre for Victorian Data Linkages and Tasmania have the Tasmanian Data Linkage Unit. Nationally, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare have a linkage unit that links um, health-related data. The ABS also do some linkage for non-health-related data collections, and they also do, do some linkage to health. And within Queensland, the Queensland Government Statisticians Office also does some linkage of non-health-related data collections. So as I said, AHW does some linkage of health-related data collection, so the reason to go to the AHW rather than to a state-based linkage unit is for linkage of those national data collections, so MBS, PBS and residential aged care, or if you need to know information about people within a jurisdiction who might have a service event or who might have died and been registered in a different jurisdiction, so they can link to, for example, the National Death Index. Whereas within a jurisdiction, we would link to the death registration data within that jurisdiction for people who are registered there. Okay, within Queensland Health, we have two main forms of data linkage. So we have production linkage. So we're creating a master linkage file that has enduring linkage between core health data collections. And I'll tell you what collections we're linking in a minute. Um, our linkage Production linkage is done in near real time, so we're doing linkage every two weeks to try to be as up to date as we can for the collection where possible. And our master linkage file contains about 45 million records at, at this stage. The other part of linkage within Queensland is request linkage. So we um, are able to either provide data from our master linkage file or we do a customised linkage where that data collection isn't within our master linkage file and that's for both research and government requests. Within our master linkage file, the data collections 
that we have included and the time periods are up on the screen here. Um, so the big one that we get most requests for is the Queensland Hospital Admitted Patient data. We have both public and private records, uh, um, hospitals included there. The time period that we have names and addresses on our data for the two different types of hospitals is different, so we can link a lot further back with our public hospitals than we can with our private. Um, we have names and addresses on our public system going back to 1995, so we will be linking back to that period. Currently, we're linked back to 2001. In private hospitals, we only have names and addresses from July 2007. Um, we also have emergency department data, our perinatal data relating to all births that occur in Queensland. We have death registration data. We're linking that back to 1995 as well, and currently it's back to 2001. We have birth registration, elective surgery and outpatient waiting list that relates to the public hospitals. We also have some in, um, internal programs, so Surgery Connect program, which is about um, contracted care in private hospitals that's contracted by public hospitals. We have Queensland Ambulance Service data that's just recently been joined through our master linkage file and we'll be going back to 2008 with that, but we've just at this stage linked a few months. Um, in progress, we have notifiable conditions, vaccination, non-admitted patient um, data for public hospitals, sort of outpatient clinics. We're going to be linking air retrieval, so that includes flying doctors and care flight information. And we are in negotiation with the education department to link some of their collections so that people can look at things like NAPLAN results and AEDC. We also um, can have conducted in the past um, linkage to other ad hoc data collections. So some of those I've listed on this slide, so registries, cancer, pap smear, trauma, stroke, suicide, other government agencies, corrections, transport and main roads, mines and natural resources linked to other Queensland health data collections, so community mental health is a common um, request we receive, pathology, pharmacy, operating room and ICU, and then other cohorts that have been provided by clients. So how linked data are used? So within Queensland Health, um, we get a lot of requests, probably about 60% of our requests come from within the department, and they're around things like trying to understand prevalence of um, diagnoses and diseases and comorbidities, um, planning, so looking at the number of people who are using services, the number of episodes per person, looking at readmission rates, patient transfers and patterns of where patients are going between hospitals. We also have requests for monitoring and evaluation purposes, so looking at service use and patient outcomes and trying to just improve allocation and recoup, recruitment of funds across different services. Clinically, there's a lot of use of linked data at the point of patient care. It comes from a different system that's just linking within hospitals. Um, so that's looking at things like previous service use by a patient when they actually arrive at a hospital and looking at things like allergies and drug information that's already been recorded in the system. And that's part of the um, electric electronic medical record and also we have a system within Queensland called the viewer that is sort of the interface where, where clinicians are able to view that information. For research, I've just included a few examples. I mean, we have sort of over 100 requests per year that we receive for, for um, projects. We um, hold a data linkage symposium every year and it is possible to video conference into that if people are interested in other jurisdictions or to come along. It's actually been held next Wednesday, so um, if you just look on our website there are details of that. But these presentations are all available on our website and they have, so there's more information about them. So there's things like looking at the relationship between mental illness and offending, cardiovascular health in people who are hospitalised for burns, um, looking at Indigenous status on data collections where there's not good coverage of that particular data item, so the example here is cervical screening data, looking at vaccination programs and looking at outcomes for patients who have been vaccinated, and then one very interesting presentation from our symposium last year that looked at cost effectiveness of homelessness intervention, so that's linked a lot of different data collections from across 
all different sectors, including health. So how to access linked data in Queensland? So access to confidential data in Queensland, we have legislation called the Public Health Act. Um, and you also so you need to fill in a form that relates to that. We also need ethics approval. So um, I'll give you a link in a minute to our website um, and that has links then to the different areas and departments that contain more information about that process. So it's important to note, I guess, that Queensland Health remains the data custodian of all Queensland Health data and that data can't be shared or published except in an aggregate form. Um, data can only be used for the purposes outlined in an approved request, so that all of that information goes into a public health application, it's also on the ethics protocol. Um, the information about what you're able to do with data that you obtain from Queensland Health is all detailed on the Public Health Applica Act application. And if you need to access the same data set or a different researcher would like to access the same data set for another project, what you'd need to do is just an amendment to that um, Public Health Act application and ethics, or if it's very, very different, then a new application might be required. So this is the Queensland Health website relating to data linkage, and we've got lots of resources there for people to understand how they apply for linked data or linkage services within Queensland. Um, we've also got some resources that people find quite useful. So we've got a nice table there that lists all of the commonly requested data collections that people are accessing from us. It's got um, a column with contacts to sort of apply for that linked data. And then some resources as well, some manuals and forms that relate to that data collection to help you understand the scope and coverage in that data collection. So for example, one of the forms for our admitted patient data collection, and we've done these up for several of our data collections, relates to the commonly requested data items from those collections and what they look like, a bit of information about them. So those forms are all available on our website. Okay, and that's all from me. Thank you very much. And please, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you very much, Tricia. So we're just going to pass over to James now, and he's going to um, present to us about the Australian Health Thesaurus. Okay, thanks Kate. Um, hi everyone, um, I'm from Health Direct Australia, so I'll start by um, talking a bit about Health Direct Australia, about who we are. We're a um, government funded organisation, we're a not for profit, we're actually a, um, a co-ag company. We've been running, uh, going since uh, 2006 and um, we're actually owned by the Federal Health Department and the State Departments, uh, State Health Departments of every state except for Victoria and Queensland. And we were set up to develop a range of digital health and telehealth services. We began as the National Health Call Centre Network for um, people to contact um, after hours if they're having um, trouble um, um, with any health issues. Um, we became a digital organisation of maybe five or six years ago and we provide um, digital services and other health information and advice um, to the Australian population. Um, some of our um, websites and services are the main Health Direct website, which is our general health website. We also have the uh, a pregnancy, birth and baby website. We have a carer gateway for those people who identify themselves as carers of um, people who have a disability or who are um, chronically ill. We run the Health Direct After Hours GP helpline, which is another contact centre. The My Aged Care website on behalf of the federal government. We have a National Health Services directory, so you can uh, find the um, GPs, uh, specialists, uh, emergency departments of um, um, in your local area. We run the Quit Line and get healthy services in New South Wales as well. But I'm here to talk about the Australian Health Thesaurus, which we manage, and it's a thesaurus of medical health and human services related concepts. It's human services as well because we manage the aged care and carer uh, websites. It reflects the current Australian health and human services environments. Um, you can see on the right hand side I've got some statistics there with some of the, um, uh, we have over 5,000 concepts within our thesaurus. It was originally developed by the Department of Health and Ageing um, many years ago and uh, we inherited that um, the thesaurus about four or five years ago. The thesaurus is actually based on MESH, the medical subject headings, um, which is maintained by the US Library of Medicine. We regularly update the, the, the thesaurus. We look at all the user analytics to see what, what are people searching for on our website. We look at the current 
uh, news developments um, such as the Zika virus. When the outbreak occurred in Australia a couple of years ago, we had no concepts on Zika virus, so we added that in. And we also do um, environmental analysis of um, certain domain areas such as aged care, which we did when we um, set up the My Aged Care website. So we looked at all the websites that in Australia that um, um, focus on aged care and looked at all the concepts that they're using. The main thing about our thesaurus though is that it's consumer focused. It's not aimed at the clinicians or uh, health professionals, it's aimed at consumers. So we, we try to keep that, um, that uh, focus on the concepts. So the, um, the slide, this slide here, you can see on the left hand side, this is the, um, the main concept schemes within our thesaurus. You can see we've got anatomy, chemicals and drugs, diseases and disorders, equipment and supplies, facilities. Uh, so there's quite a lot of different um, concepts there. If you click on one of those concept schemes, you can go through the hierarchy to see, and on the right hand side, you can see I've gone down to the, um, through diseases and disorders, digestive system diseases, and I've now selected the liver cancer concept. Clicking on the concept provides the, uh, shows us the other information about that concept, and here you can see what's called the SCOS view, the S-K-O-S, the Simple Knowledge Organisation System view, which is basically um, showing you the broader, narrower, and related concepts. Also on the right-hand side, you can see we have uh, the preferred label and alternative labels, and the alternative labels are the synonyms. So the idea being um, for our websites that if people, in this case, if they search for hepatic cancer, they can find content that has been classified with the concept liver cancer. So the main, um, the main reasons we have our thesaurus is, as I just mentioned, was the classification purposes. So all our content is classified with the thesaurus. Um, it also helps in the uh, relevance in our search results in the, into the, in the ranking. Uh, we also use it for uh, auto-suggestion as well, so if you, once you start typing in your search in the top field, you'll get a list of suggestions to, to select. We can display uh, other contextual content on the website as well, such as a video on asthma will appear on content, uh, an article about asthma because they're both classified with the same concepts. And we also use it to manage our medicines data, and this is what I really want to show you today because it shows you how we are linking our data. We've set up a, a, um, a medicines catalogue and we've looked at um, all the publicly available medicine data sets that we could find in Australia. Um, and we're starting off with our own health um, Australian Health Thesaurus, which we um, are using as our control list. We've also um, looked at the Australian medicines terminology. This is the, the national standard for naming conventions for all medicines in Australia. This is managed by the Australian Digital Health um, Agency Authority. We also have data from the Therapeutic Goods Administration through the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods. That's a register of all the drugs that are sold in Australia. Um, they also have data from the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme and also uh, Guildlink, which is the commercial arm of the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. And from them we get pill images and we're just going through a process with them at the moment to get their consumer medicine information leaflets. Um, that's the leaflet you get by, you, that's in a packet when you buy, buy it over the counter. Um, and we want to get that in HTML format so that we can present the data on our website in a much uh, more consumer friendly way. We're also getting info, um, uh, data from Drug Bank, which is a great Canadian um, government initiative. Um, it's got uh, great information about um, medicines and chemicals. You can see on this slide now that this is what we do with our thesaurus. This is how we start the linking process with the, these other data sets. Um, I've, I've selected the concept amitriptyline, which is a, um, an active ingredient, and we've created a whole new concept uh, uh, custom schema, which we call clinical relationships. And you can see on the right hand side in that column, you can see we have a, we've added the ID, the identification of the um, Australian Medicines Terminology ID. And a bit further down, we've also got a, um, an ID for Drug Bank. So it's just a mapping with those concepts in those data sets. You also see there's a reference there to a, um, a beers criteria. And that's not um, the fact that this can be used to, to make beer. It's a um, it's an internationally recognised list of um, medicines that are inappropriate to prescribe to older people. In this case, this is one of those um, drugs, and we've got the um, the Boolean logic of true here. A bit further down, we've also got um, 
a pregnancy category as well, which we get from the TGA, and this has got a pregnancy category of C. We're not actually using that at the moment, but we do intend to use that on our website soon. So what we're doing every month, we update what we call a, a terminology service. It's a database. We import all the data from all of those those data sets into our um, terminology service from the Australian Health Thesaurus, the TGA, PBS, the AMT, Drug Bank, and Guildlink. And we've quite, um, developed the relationships between all those data sets so that when a user searches on a um, for a medicine on our website, um, they can dynamically pull that content, all that data in, into a web page for them. On this page, you can actually see how those uh, relationships work. I showed you where the um, AHT had that reference to the um, Australian Medicine Terminology and Drug Bank. We can see that those relationships are here with the Drug Bank and AMT. The AMT actually has um, seven different data sets within it um, from medicinal product, which is a, um, a list of, could be the active ingredient used in a drug, uh, and the trade product, which is the actual brand name of that. And you can see you can actually work your way through these relationships to come down to the container trade product pack, which could be in that data set. It could be um, you know, Panadol, 20 milligrams, 20 tablets in a blister pack. And that data set has a reference to the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods ID which the TGA manages. And Guildlink also uses that, that ID as well. And you see on the other side, left-hand side there, the, uh, ref the PBS link, which is, um, there's a reference to that ID in the medicinal product unit of use data set. So we can link up all of these data sets. And as I said before, the use is that so that if somebody searched on any medicine, we can pull the data from all of these data, data sets to show um, uh, information to the people. And so what does it look like to a, to a user? I can show you from our site here. This is a, um, a page on the, on the drug NDEP. And as I scroll down the page, you can see there's uh, the information on the page. When I said, remember when I said uh, the beers criteria? Um, because I had that true flag in the data, it's, uh, we've pulled up this warning here to say that if you're over 65 years of age, there may be specific risks and recommendations for use for this medicine. So please consult your health professional or pharmacist. As I scroll down here, people can select the type of packet that they have. In this case, whether it's a 10 milligram or a 25 milligram or a 50 milligram pack. That's coming from the AMT, the Australian Medicines Terminology. As one of the, one of the bits of data we have from the TGA, is a uh, PDF version of the Consumer Medicines Information Leaflet, and so we have a link to that. So if that exists, then they can click on this Read Leaflet to be able to read um, the Consumer Medicines Information Leaflet, which will tell them all about the side effects of the drug, when they can use it, when they can't use it, that type of thing. Then we have other information here as well, um, coming from the TGA, and also images coming from Guildlink. So we've got the dosage form, the route of administration, we've got information about the pack, about how to store the drug um, and the lifetime of the drug. And also if that drug was available on the PBS, then there's a link here as well to go to the PBS site. Okay, go back to the slide. Uh, the thesaurus can also be used, um, um, we have a public version of it that can be um, accessed by individuals and organisations as well. Um, so it can be used for research purposes. Just remember, it has a, it's consumer language. It's aligned to uh, medical, clinical, and, and government um, standards and, and systems. And it, uh, it forms a bridge between those three um, different domains. And it could potentially be used for, uh, for surveys, uh, for interviews, and for transcripts. And I've got the link for it coming up soon. But this is what the public uh, version of our thesaurus looks like. Here you can um, you can do a search for a concept. You can um, select the A to Z list, or you can click on any of the concepts and just drill your way down through the through the concepts to find the right concept you need, and you can still find the right information. This is only showing that that SCOS view that I showed you before with the the broader, narrower, and related concepts, uh, but you can also find some other information on that as well. And there's also a, um, a visual um, version of it as well, so that you can see in a visual format what are the, the narrower and related and broader concepts of that, that concept. 
Um, here are some, some links which you might find useful. Uh, the first one is of our um, website, uh, the main health threat website. Um, we also have a link there to the medicines pages where you can start searching and see the, how all that data comes together. Um, I've got a, a link here uh, which shows you general information about the thesaurus and for those who actually want to get into the thesaurus and look at it itself, that's the link down the bottom, that's the thesaurus.healthdirect.org.au slash AHT. Okay, and that's it, so thank you. Thank you very much, James, for your presentation. So I'd just like to thank Tricia and James for coming along to our webinar today. It's been really informative and we really appreciate you um, taking the time to do that. Thank you everyone for your time today and we'll see you next time we have some more health and medical things to talk about.